Those that served in the army of the Persian King Xerxes were as I will now show. Firstly, there were the Persians. For their equipment they wore on their heads loose caps called tiaras, and on their bodies sleeved tunics of diverse colors, with scales of iron similar in appearance to the scales of fish, and short pants on their legs. Instead of ordinary shields, they had shields of wicker work. They carried short spears, long bows, and arrows of reed, and daggers that hung from the belt by the right thigh. Their commander was Otanis, father of Xerxes' wife, and the son of Amestris. The Medes in the army were equipped like the Persians. In fact, that fashion of armor is Median, not Persian. Their commander was Tigranes, an Achaemenid Persian. The Kissians in the army were equipped like the Persians, but they wore turbans, not caps. Their commander was Anaphis, son of Otanis. The Hyrcanians, from near the Caspian Sea, were armed like the Persians. Their leader was Megapanus, who was afterwards the governor of Babylon. The Assyrians of the army wore on their heads helmets of twisted bronze, made in an outlandish fashion not easy to describe. They bore shields and spears and daggers of Egyptian fashion, and wooden clubs studded with iron, and they wore linen upper body protection. These are called by Greeks Syrians, but the barbarians called them Assyrians. With them were the Chaldeans. Their commander was Otaspes. The Bactrians in the army wore headgear, most similar to the Median, carrying their native bows of reed and short spears. The Sakians, who are Scythians, had on their heads tall caps, erect and stiff and tapering to a point. They wore short pants and carried their native bows, daggers and axes, which they call sagaris. These were the Amirgian Scythians, but were called Sakians, for that Sakians is the Persian name for all Scythians. The commander of the Bactrians and Sakians was Histaspes, son of Darius and Cyrus's daughter Atossa. The Indians wore garments of tree wool and carried bows of reed and iron-tipped arrows of the same. Such was their equipment. The Aryans were equipped with Median bows, but in everything else, they were like the Bactrians. Their commander was Sisamis, son of Hidarnes. The Parthians, Sogdians, Gandarians, Dadikians, in the army had the same equipment as the Bactrians. The Parthians and Chorasamians had for their commander Artabazus, son of Pharnakis. The Caspians, from the southwestern shores of the Caspian Sea, the army wore cloaks and carried the reed bows of their country in short swords. Such was their equipment. Their leader was Ariomardos. The Sarangians made a brave show with dyed garments and knee-high boots, carrying bows and Median spears. Their commander was Ferendates, son of Megabazus. The Pactians wore cloaks and carried the bows of their country in daggers. The Arabians wore mantles with belts and carried at their right side long bows curving backwards. The Ethiopians wore skins of leopards and lions. They carried bows made of palm wood strips that were four cubits long and full and carried short arrows pointed not with iron but with a sharpened stone, the type of stone used to carve seals. Moreover, they had spears pointed with a gazelle's horn, sharpened to the likeness of a lance, and studded clubs in addition. When they went into battle, they painted half their bodies with gypsum, and the other half with vermilion. The Ethiopians south of Egypt and the Arabians had Arsamis for commander, and the Ethiopians of the east, for there were two kinds of them in the army, served with the Indians. They did not differ in appearance from the others, but only in speech and hair, for the Ethiopians from the east are straight-haired, but the Libyans have the woolliest hair of anyone. These Ethiopians of Asia were for the most part armed like the Indians, but they wore on their heads the skins of horses' foreheads, stripped from the head with ears and mane. 
The mane served them for a crest, and they wore the horse's ears stiff and upright. For shields they had bucklers of crane's skin. The Paphlagonians in the army had plated helmets on their heads. They had small shields and short spears, as well as javelins and daggers. They wore the shoes of their country, which reach halfway to the knee. The Lygians, Matineans, and Syrians were equipped like the Paphlagonians. These Syrians are called by the Persians Cappadocians. The Phrygian equipment was most like the Paphlagonian, but with only small differences. By what the Macedonians say, these Phrygians were called Brygians, as long as they lived in Europe where they were neighbors of the Macedonians. But when they changed their home to Asia, they changed their name also and were called Phrygians. The Armenians, who are settlers from Phrygia, were armed like the Phrygians. Both these together had for their commander Artochemis, Darius's son-in-law. The Lydian armor was most similar to Greek armor. The Lydians were formerly called Meonians till they changed their name and were named after Lydos. The Mycians wore on their heads helmets of native form, carrying small shields and javelins of charred wood. The Thracians in the army wore fox skin caps on their heads and tunics on their bodies. Mantles of diverse colors were their covering. They had shoes of fawn skin on their feet and legs and carried javelins, little shields and daggers. There are horsemen among these people, yet not all of them furnished cavalry, and only the ones I will list. First, the Persians, equipped like their foot soldiers, save that some of them wore headgear of hammered bronze and iron. There are also certain nomads called Segartians. They are Persian in speech, and the fashion of their equipment is somewhat between the Persian and Pactian. They supplied 8,000 horsemen, it is their custom to carry no armor of bronze or iron, except daggers only, and to use ropes of twisted leather. In these they trust when they go to battle. This is their manner of fighting when they are at close quarters with the enemy. They throw their ropes which have a noose at the end. Whatever they catch, be it horse or man, the thrower drags it to himself, and the enemy, entangled in this way, in the coils is killed. This is their manner of fighting. Their place in the army was with the Persians. The Median horsemen were equipped like their foot soldiers, and the Kissians likewise. The Indians were armed in like manner as their foot soldiers. They rode swift horses and drove chariots drawn by horses and wild asses. The Bactrians were equipped as were their foot soldiers, and the Caspians in a similar manner. The Libyans too were armed like the men of their infantry, and all of them drove chariots as well. So likewise the Caspians and Paracanians were armed as the men of their infantry. The Arabians had the same equipment as the men of their infantry, and all of them rode on camels no less swift than horses. These people only are riders. The number of the horsemen was shown to be 80,000, besides the camels and the chariots. All the rest of the riders were ranked in their several troops, but the Arabians were posted at the back. For the horses cannot stand the sight of camels, their place was in the back, that so the horses might not be frightened.